Madeline? Madeline. Madeline. Hey, I'll get started when we get our Well, good morning. If we could uh, have everybody grab a seat, we got plenty of seats here, and want to thank uh, our city staff for all the efforts to set this thing up. Let's give everybody a few minutes or a few seconds here to get a seat. Develop the grants and all that we've needed, the resources that we may have, and those who have developed the plans and laid a firm foundation. Bless those who will construct this building. May they have safe working conditions and may no harm befall them. May the jobs created by this project sustain families who call this city, our county, and our area home. Bless future generations who will come here to benefit this, from this facility. And we thank you in advance for the good that will come and benefit that this facility will bring to our entire region. For it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Twelve years ago, during the height of recession, several of us huddled, huddled together and thought, what can we do? What can we do to get this, get this economy going again? At that point in time, Conover alone had two and a half million square feet of empty manufacturing space within a five mile radius of where we're standing now. Jobs were quickly going overseas and our region had 12 plus percent of unemployment and our national economy was stalled. Dan St. Louis shared an idea. I knew and trusted Dan. He and I had worked closely together when the MSC was previously called the Hosiery Technology Center. I valued Dan's friendship and always have respected his, his passion, passion for, for US, US manufacturing. manufacturing. The, the idea, idea was, was to refocus on manufacturing, manufacturing. Not, not to reinvent, reinvent ourselves, ourselves as something we were not, not but, but to, to double, double down, down on what, what's, on what, what we've, we've always been, been which, which is a manufacturing region of quality products for the world. And, and thus the idea of MSC was born, a facility where young ideas and advanced manufacturing technology could get started and then grow sufficiently to occupy vacant, vacant manufacturing space in our region. Today, the Manufacturing Solutions Center is nationally known as one of the most successful manufacturing incubator spaces in the country. Several much larger cities have tried to imitate this business model with little success. 
trying to replicate a partnership of a small town and a local community college would prove difficult for most. So what's the difference? Conover invested in CVCC's MSC, success, and at the time, quite frankly, failure was not an option. We had to grasp an opportunity to restart American manufacturing innovation and put our citizens back to work. Now fast forward to today. We combine our strengths and break ground on the PPE dash North Carolina and much needed MSC2 additional incubator spaces. This will be another public private partnership between the city of Conover, state of North Carolina, Catawba County Community College, and private sector partner Ingram Walker, Walkers and his team. The COVID-19 pandemic created an urgent platform to source, produce, and certify personal protective equipment in the United States. MSC was tasked early on in the pandemic to assist business in testing textile products for PPE, even though they had no prior experience. Jody Geis and her team quickly learned and worked around the clock during the throes of the early pandemic. COVID-19 revealed the U.S. supply chain for PPE was, was an extreme deficit. At that, that time, 97% of all PPE was made in China and the Far East. It's, it's no, no secret, secret that the U.S. did not have the necessary supply of PPE to react to this national crisis. We, we saw, saw many companies, companies immediately step up and transform their production lines to make PPE However, the certifications for medical PPE are much more specific than their current line, which was apparel, furniture, upholstery, and other sewn products. It's a fact that the majority of the fabrics produced in the United States are manufactured within a 200 mile radius of where we are. So the Federal Drug Administration, FDA, will release new PPE testing and certifications soon. This new facility will be ready to support companies with prototyping new products, training employees on new machines, testing product, and allowing U.S. companies to take products to market in record time. We started this grant application with a block grant for $1 million and it quickly morphed into a $9 million appropriation from the CARES Act funds to build this wonderful facility. With such a short timeline, we successfully secured help from our federal de delegation. Representative Patrick McHenry, Senator Burr, and enormous assistance from Senator Tillis' staff. Ultimately, former President Trump signed off on the bill with the help of Chris Pickleton, who was the advisor of, of President Trump's Office of Innovation. Chris actually visited MSC and he quickly captured the vision and was able to translate that to our president. We are grateful for our North Carolina Assembly that stepped in with an enormous amount of support to make this possible. Representative Jay Adams and Senator Dean Proctor, Senator Kathy Harrington, Representatives Jason Stain, Representative Mitchell Setzer, and Mr. Nelson Dollar reappropriated new funds from the NC State budget for this project. Thank you for your tireless efforts advocating for Conover. We truly appreciate your confidence in the MSC vision and our city team to execute. We want to extend a special thank you to Speaker of the House Tim Moore and his staff, Dan Gurley, and Conover's own Chris Pittman. There have been many more that helped this helped us out and we thank you. You helped us to make a small town center for USA made PPE. Special thanks to Dr. Henshaw, Tony Whitener, John Ross, David Zirk, Jody Street, Van Southern, and our whole Conover team, especially the leadership of our Conover City Council. Once again, Conover City Council, you have taken the risk for the betterment of the, be of the greater good. Leading from the front is what you always do for our citizens in our region, and I sincerely thank you. We build this facility employing a local architect, Campbell Design, 
a local contractor, Matthews Construction, and the services of a local bank, People's Bank, who's financing the private sector portion of this bill. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a win, 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 win for our region. So today in closing, as we break ground today on this building, for the greater good of all Americans, may the achievements that come from this building in the years to come spare countless American lives. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mayor Moritz. Good morning. What a day for groundbreaking and to celebrate Conover. For me, it seems fitting to be here at this beautiful amphitheater named after Norman B. Coley as I worked for Norman right before I began work at the Manufacturing Solutions Center more than 18 years ago. My name is Jody Geis, and I'm the recently appointed director of the Manufacturing Solutions Center at Catawba Valley Community College. And it is an honor to be in such incredible company today. On behalf of the entire Manufacturing Solutions Center, I would like to thank the state of North Carolina, the city of Conover, Mayor Lee Moritz, all the members of Conover City Council, City Manager Donald Duncan, and the citizens of Conover for their continued commitment to this endeavor. You understand our mission, you embrace our vision, and you continue to invest in the MSC. To Senator Dean Proctor and Representative Jay Adams, thank you doesn't seem like enough. Your encouragement to go big was scary, but it was spot on. You heard our customers and the community's needs and immediately re reacted. Your tireless efforts, along with those of Senator Kathy Harrington and others, put public safety and health, along with manufacturing and job creation, at the forefront during COVID. We owe thanks to Dr. Garrett Henshaw, president of CVCC. He has always had our backs and has encouraged us to work smarter, not harder. And to all the leadership at CVCC, you have provided us the support, guidance, and tools needed to safely operate and aid customers over the years and during this pandemic. We owe you thanks as well. To the staff of MSC, I am speechless. If you are in a red MSC shirt, could you please stand up or hold your hand up? These people are the heart and soul of the MSC, and I learned early in my career to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you are. These folks standing or with their hands up, they're amazing. MSC, you got out of your comfort zone, and in a pandemic, you had to pivot, shift, and change. Just like you have time and time again, you've always answered the call of the customer. This is what makes us special. This is what makes us successful. This is what keeps us relevant, and this is what separates us from others. You may be seated. While MSC owes so much to so many people in attendance here today, we would not be here without the infectious vision of Dan St. Louis. For 30 years, Dan tirelessly poured his heart, soul, and spirit into this center. From humbled meek beginnings at the Hodry Technology Center, where we pretended that stale cookies were the most fabulous macaroons, <laughs> through being written out of the state budget in the middle of the night and onto a beautiful new state-of-the-art building here in Conover where we proudly renamed ourselves the Manufacturing Solutions Center. And then finally, to June 26, 2020, when you quietly retire during a pandemic, all this led to this day. To know Dan is to know a spirited, animated, textile-loving coach. And I'll call him coach because that's what he did. He led a team. He would say, MSC, put your head down and go build me a textile lab or a knitting lab or a structure lab. And he gave us the support and the freedom to do it. He always asked us, what do you need? And, we would go, and he would go find the support or the money or the people needed. Dan was a humble, passionate leader, and we have the privilege to continue his legacy. To Sandra and all the St. Louis family, we thank you for your sacrifice. Dan's work has not gone unnoticed, and it, is not, and it has made an impact. He is a bright, bright light in the sometimes dim textile industry that will be greatly missed, and we can only try to shine as bright as he did. Congratulations on a well-earned retirement, Dan. And 
And as I begin my thanks, or end my thanks, I, <clears throat> I would be remiss if I didn't thank Tony Whitener for all his su support through this process. As I have quickly learned in the last 10 months, there are so many rock solid relationships that Dan fostered that laid the groundwork for the success at MSC. The state of North Carolina, the North Carolina Community College System, North Carolina MEP, the Carolina Textile District, the Catawba Chamber of Commerce, Western Piedmont Council of Governors, NCDP, the EDC, I could go on and on and I'm sure I've missed some really important ones. But our newest partnership with Gaston College's Textile Technology Center was the brainchild of about five to six key individuals. And for this, I'd like to introduce Sam Buff, a friend and no stranger to the MSC. From a groundbreaking conception involving two dynamic community college presidents, Sam is now the vice president and general manager of the newly formed Manufacturing and Textile Innovation Network. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sam Buff. Well, Jody about made me cry, number one. But number two is I walk up here and I've got a script and I know I'm going to get to it here in a second. But it's not lost on me that uh, if we're here next year at this time and you look over your shoulders, you're going to see a brand new state-of-the-art facility uh, packed with, with innovative ideas. And that leads me to a Dan St. Louis story. And I know it's true because he told me this story. Actually, he did not tell me this story. Um, I heard it from a friend who knows him very well, and he said that these things are true, so since he said, Dan said it, it has to be true. But it all starts with, um, with the uh, approval of putting the building out here. And Dan immediately, he's excitable, I don't know if you guys know that or not. He can get kind of excited. And so he got really excited and started calling everybody, you know, the architects, the builders, whoever he could get to. And, and he had a must have. And everybody has a must have in their buildings, right? This building must have, and this is a true story, this building must have a Lexington barbecue franchise in it somewhere. <laughs> so I know Tony and Jody and the MSC crew has been kind of laying out what's gonna go in this thing. But if there's not a barbecue in there somewhere, Dan's gonna be really upset and tell you the truth, I probably will be too. That's a true story. Back to business. Uh, good morning and thank you for the opportunity to represent the Manufacturing and Textile Innovation Network on such a historic day. And a day like this doesn't happen by accident. It happens because of a, a lot of countless hours of work, uh, dedicated probably some sleepless nights, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of vision from the folks that are involved. And many of you here today probably have never heard of the Manufacturing and Textile Innovation Network, what we call the MTIN. And I'm going to let you off today. It's okay because we're a baby. We're, we're really four months old. But what you do know are its parents. You know the Catawba Valley Community College and you know Gaston College very well. And it's their unique partnership that's going to allow the Manufacturing Solution Center right behind you and the Textile Technology Center down in Belmont to work together in a way that it's never worked before. So that's going to help us uh, operate in coordination with each other to provide better support for our industry partners. And the vision's pretty simple, and I'm going to give you kind of Sam's version of the vision, so I'll be careful here. The MTIM will do everything in its power to support the industry and the state and this country and help us maintain these good manufacturing jobs. Um, sorry winds blowing. This new and exciting network serves as another economic development resource for this community, our region, and the state of North Carolina. And was this new partnership dreamed up a few months ago? Uh, short answer, nope, it was not. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to acknowledge all of the folks that contributed to making this dream a reality. And I'd find it equally challenging to remember how long ago this idea has been batted around in some shape or form. What I can tell you is that it takes leaders with vision to pull something like this off. And it's been an honor and privilege to work with so many leaders on this project, uh, many of which are gathered here today. I'm surrounded by them. And as we break ground and cement another chapter in the legacy of the Manufacturing Solutions Center, 
I would find it impossible to stand in front of you without recognizing the leader that possessed not only the vision, but what I would call dogged determination to see the vision become a reality. Now I consider Dan St. Louis a one of a kind, inspirational leader that comes by once in a generation. Unfortunately, there just aren't that many Dans in the world. This world needs more Dan St. Louis's. But I've, I've watched Dan. Dan's led this center through some really good times and some challenging times too. And what has never changed, he's tirelessly promoted the MSC and the industry from coast to coast in the halls of Congress and in the streets of Conover. And thank you, Dan, for your vision, your passion, and your unwavering commitment to Catawba Valley Community College, the MSC, and the creation of this new thing we call MTIN. You've not only been an industry giant, you've been a great mentor and friend. We would not be standing here today without your vision. So thank you, Dan. I'd like to introduce our next speaker. He's uh, one of the visionary leaders that I mentioned earlier, the president of Catawba Valley Community College, Dr. Garrett Henshaw. What a great day to be in Catawba County in the city of Conover. Mr. Mayor, City Council of Conover, thank you. I'd like for you all to stand up because your willingness to get something done is second to none. Let's recognize their efforts. You know, you've heard the word partnership used a lot today in the comments that have been made. And you know that's the secret sauce of Catawba County. Everybody who's sitting here today is a part of that secret sauce and that partnership. And there's not another individual that represents that better than Dan St. Louis. When I think of the partners, I want to thank Dr. John Hooser at Gaston College for being willing to step into a new situation and say, let's go. John and I used to play football against each other in high school. And sometimes I won, sometimes he won, but we both win when we join our efforts and leverage our assets together for this reason. So John, thank you for your friendship and for your partnership. We also have representatives from North Carolina State University that are important in the future of this mission. Dr. David Hinks and Dr. Tom White are here today. David, Tom, thank you all for always being there to support us and we are so excited about what the future holds with North Carolina State University. But this is about Dan. I met Dan 31 years, well, no, 14 years ago. He was packed into the back of our East Campus in a little bitty area with stuff laying everywhere. And I walked into his office and all of a sudden I knew that my life would change forever. And Sam, if there were any more Dan St. Louis's, I'd have to be retired too. <laughs> he absolutely showed me an energy that I'd never experienced before. And I said, you know, there's something special about this, this this center, there's something special about the people that work for this center, and there's something special about the future of what we're going to create. And with the partnership of the city of Conover, we got to move into a huge facility, and then we outgrew it. And today we're celebrating that growth and that future growth that we'll experience as a result of Dan St. Louis's leadership. First time that Dan St. Louis and I traveled to Washington, D.C., we had an opportunity to sit in front of the main staffers of President Obama's first term. We were talking about a new research, a new type of textile that was being developed here in this area that we were working with. And those staffers, they were interested in what we were saying, but they were sort of sitting back in their chairs. You know how staffers in Washington, D.C. sometimes do. And they asked Dan, they said, well, Dan, this is all interesting research that you've brought in front of us today, but how many white papers have you written about this? Those of you that know Dan St. Louis can imagine his reaction. Dan sent straight up to the table, slammed his fist on the table and said, white papers, white papers, we ain't got time to write white papers, this is about jobs. <laughs> All of a sudden, those staffers set up and paid attention. From that moment on, I knew I was among greatness. Well, Dan, today, 
we recognize your greatness and so does the state of North Carolina. Governor Roy Cooper is bestowing the greatest honor for a private citizen in this state upon you today. And so if you would come up here, I'm going to read you what the governor is saying. On behalf of Governor Roy Cooper, reposing special confidence in the integrity, learning, and zeal of Dan St. Louis, I do by these presents confer the order of the Longleaf Pine with the rank of ambassador extraordinary, privileged to enjoy fully all rights granted to members of this exalted order, among which is the special privilege to propose the following North Carolina toast in select com company anywhere in the free world. I'd like for y'all to stand for this toast. Here's to the land of the longleaf pine, the summer land where the sun does shine, where the weak grow strong and the strong grow great. There's to down home, the old North State. Dan, you're now a member of the Order of the Longleaf Pine. Well, that's certainly unexpected. Um, Tony, you got me one more time. <laughs> I had no idea any of this was going on, as usual. Um, he loves to put me in these situations. Uh, both the, my 50-year birthday and 60-year birthday are good examples of what he loves to do. But um, uh, one thing about it with, you know, well, I have been retired for a few months and I've had a chance to really think about the question. A lot of folks have always asked me, what, what was the success? How, how come MSC was successful? And it's really pretty simple. Um, first of all, you know, they're looking for an idea or some great idea that I came from, that I came up with. Well, that doesn't work. My wife would tell you that. That didn't come from me for sure. Um, the good Lord put a lot of people in, in my way and in the center through the years to help guide us all the way through. And Jody, you did a great job of mentioning so many of them, you know, whether it's certainly the city of Conover, we could have never done this without the city and all the, the councils, Lee and Donald Duncan, and you know, he went everywhere with me and would talk to anybody who would listen and even people who didn't want to listen, they still heard it, which, which was real important in getting out and getting the word. It's, it's our partners, you know, certainly Gaston College, you know, Sam and I have been like brothers for the last 10 years or whatever, and um, uh, it's been huge. Uh, folks like the uh, Carolina Textile District, gosh, it's amazing what they've accomplished in Morgan and working with us. And uh, it's the EDPNC, the Economic Development Partnership in North Carolina. Uh, back when we were really floundering, Tom White and spent a lot of time with us trying to we had a lot of conversations. What can we do? We're, we're in, in, in the tank as a, as a community back in 2008. And uh, I, the folks from NC State, the College of Textiles, the, you know, certainly they do some research that we don't do. And that's been huge. They've been very sharing and, and, and I'm anxious to see what, what can come forward with that. So there's, there's been a lot of agencies that have, have come to the table and have really helped us. And so that, and we've created a system that doesn't have a lot of duplication. We all stick with what we do the best, but if you put them together, man, it's, it's amazing what you can do. Um, the other thing, as Jody mentioned, was the staff at MSC. And I have had a lot of time to think about that. Each and every one of you came at a time when, and did certain things that that we needed in the mix. You know as well as I do, I can't do what you do. <laughs> you're, you're just incredible. And that's been a secret. Um, you've helped me when I'm 
you know, help us implement things, but you also, in your own way, would be able to tell me when I'm about to do something really stupid. <laughs> and that's, that's huge. Um, and last but not least, certainly, is Tony Whitener, who is probably one of the smartest and hardest working people I've ever met, can get more done in 24 hours than most people can do in two weeks. Um, he's certainly been a true friend and absolutely incredible. Um, and I guess in closing, I'd just like to say that, you know, I appreciate all this and it's been wonderful, but I, I've just been blessed to be able to be part of this and be part of a, of a network and group, all work together to try to make things better. And that's, that's all I can ask. And um, uh, thing, uh, Dr. Henshaw, I know you have, uh, <laughs> you've been a super supporter and put up with an awful lot, but what can I ask of, of a boss that pushes me to say, hey, go do it, you know, and then help me fix it when I screw it up? And that's, that's, a, huge, that's a huge thing. So again, thank you very much for this and uh, really, really appreciate everybody's help throughout the years. And I'll turn it over to you. Know. Thanks, Dan. That was awesome. Um, folks, y'all won't believe how nice it is up here in the shade. <laughs> um, this is the first time I've had on a coat and tie in over a year, Tony. And when I left the house this morning, my wife said, honey, n nothing matches. Nothing you, nothing you got on matches. I said, baby, I'm not trying to match it. I'm just trying to button it. <laughs> and I never got this one. I never got this one to, to button up here, but... It's been a long time since I had on a coat and tie. I'll start with this. I've got a confession to make this morning, but before I make my confession, I want to try to get a small confession out of you guys. Um, I'm from Monroe, North Carolina. Does ever, don't raise your hand, but just nod if you know where Monroe is. But then keep nodding if you're sure you know where Monroe is, okay? Because Monroe could easily be confused with Marion, North Carolina, or Maiden, North Carolina, or Marvin, North Carolina, or Marshall, North Carolina. So here's my confession. The first meeting I was supposed to have in Conover with Dan and Tony and the whole crowd, I had to call and cancel the meeting. And I hate to cancel a meeting. I like to show up early to a meeting. I hate to, especially hate to cancel a meeting when people are waiting on me. But half hour before the meeting, I had to cancel. And the reason I had to cancel is there's no MSC center in Concord, North Carolina. <laughs> I had mindlessly followed my GPS to my, now there is a main street there because I think that's what I plugged in. Concord has a main street, but Concord doesn't have an MSC center. I'm glad Conover does. The wind was not an issue this morning when I was practicing in front of the bathroom mirror. If I appear a little nervous up here, it's just because I am. Um, I have to speak a lot anyway, but for some reason it never gets any easier. Uh, and one time a year I have to speak in front of a crowd that's like 2,000 people. And so it's always in Las Vegas, Tony. It's always every May. And it's a huge crowd, so I spend time getting ready for, for that meeting. Well, one May years ago, my son, who's with me today, called from school and said, his principal would like me to speak at the school. I said, son, it's not a good week because I'm speaking in front of 2,000 people in Las Vegas. I've got to work on this speech. I said, but, you know, what did he have in mind? Does he want me to come speak to the entire school, like K through 12? Or does he just want me to speak to the middle school, like 6th, 7th, and 8th grade? I said, son, I don't have a lot of time, but, you know, just how small a group does he want me to come out there and speak to? And my son said, well, Dad, right now it'd just be me, you, and the principal. <laughs> my wife and I have two wonderful kids, and then we have this third one right here. I spoke at that school many times. One day when he was a senior, he said, Dad, Dad, my parking spot, I'm a senior, my parking spot is so far from my homeroom class, I hardly had time to get there. I said, son, when Abraham Lincoln was your age, he walked four miles to school. He said, Dad, when Abraham Lincoln was your age, he was president of the United States. It's always a smarty. So 
All right, I've told one on my son. I'll tell one on my daughter. Um, she came home from school one, one day about the same grade, sixth, seventh grade, and said she had to do a survey. She said that they were doing, wanted her to do a survey on where the first humans were on earth. Where did she think that the first people that walked prone on the face of the earth, where and who were they? I said, honey, I don't know. Go ask your mother. I'm busy. She said, i got to ask ten people. i got to do a survey. I've got to know. And I said, oh, just uh, Adam and Eve. Put me, yeah, put me down for Adam and Eve like they taught us in Sunday school. You know, I believe that was the first humans on earth. I said, wow, what did your mom say? She said, well, she said that we may, some people believe that we may have evolved from the apes, that we may have come from the gorillas, and at one time may have swung from the trees by our tail. I said, hello, honey, now she's talking about her side of the family. <laughs> that brings me to Operation Whisk Broom. If you don't know, we called this Operation Whisk Broom, and Donald and Dan and Tony wanted me to explain where that term came from for you guys. This is what a whisk broom looks like if you're young and don't know what a whisk broom looks like. I brought one with me for the younger crowd. But my granddad had a gas station. And he had a gas station on a busy corner, but there were two other gas stations. So three out of the four corners had gas stations on it, right? So to be different, all my granddad did was buy a whisk broom. And he would lean in the car. Of course, back then, you remember, uh, Dan, they all checked the oil. They raised the hood. They checked the oil. They washed the windows. Everybody did that, right? So all three service stations were doing that. But what my granddad did is he got a whisk broom, and he would lean in the car and dust out the floorboards of the car. And it wasn't long people appreciated this extra effort so much. They appreciated the job that he did that they were lined up at his gas station. So one of the business lessons I give when I'm speaking is that we all need a whisk broom, regardless what business you're in, regardless what you do for a living, you need to find out what your whisk broom is. Because we all need a whisk broom, and if you can do something as simple as that, and uh, generate business like my grandpa did, then you're going to be special. So, you know, that's a good conversation you can have at lunch. Hey, if you're from a company, if your company's here, what's our whisk broom, okay? I'm going to try to put this in the holder here so I can hold my notes. There we go. I think that the city of Conover has a whisk broom, folks. The city of Conover has several whisk brooms. But the first whisk broom I want to talk about is the ultimate whisk broom, and that's the Manufacturing Solutions Center. Y'all don't know, have no idea what a whisk broom this is. I know Monroe wishes they had one. Concord, I wish there was one in Concord, too. <laughs> I'm so passionate about manufacturing, but here's the interesting part. I don't know anything about manufacturing. I know very little about manufacturing. I know very little about supply chain. But I know this country was stronger when we were manufacturing a lot. And this country will be stronger when we manufacture a lot. And uh, I can say without the fear of contradiction, I think we're less vulnerable as a country when we manufacture a lot. So I feel like sometimes we just reach in each other's pockets, you know, that uh, we're not making as much as we should anymore. And that's what I loved about this Manufacturing Solutions Center. I see the MSC Center as a, a birthplace of creativity. It's a birthplace of innovation, but I, I also see it as something different. It's a, I call it a failure center, Tony. The reason I say MSC is a failure center is because it's a place you can come with a product and it can fail and we tweak it and it can fail and we tweak it and we study it and it fails again and we change it and we change it and it fails and fails and fails until it succeeds. So this is a great place for, for failure. And once you get to a certain point in life, you understand that failure is not the opposite, opposite of success. It's a part of success, right? Y'all failed plenty of times there, hadn't you, Dan? I mean, you fail and fail and change it and tweak it. And, and, and I like that it's a place that you can come and these entrepreneurs can come and they can fail and keep trying until they get it right. Conover has other whisk rooms, too. I got to tell you, when I first came over here and met Donald Duncan and Dan St. Louis and Tony Whitener, you know, we're in a conference room, and I think three or four people have been over here to try to get this project off the ground before I got here, hadn't they, Van? And, uh, and I don't know for what reason it fell through, 
But when I met Dan and Tony and heard their passion for what they do, I don't need to know anything about manufacturing. I don't need to know anything about supply chain. I can recognize passion when I see it. And those guys had passion. And I'm not talking about normal passion. I'm talking about passion like a little kid. And when a grown man can have that kind of passion for something that he's doing, that's special. And these guys are special. And let's give them a big hand one more time. Those three guys convinced, those three guys told me we could get this done. They told me they needed more space. They told me this would be a big, huge advantage for Catawba County. They told me it'd be special for the city of Concord. They never told me that Dan was going to retire. <laughs> kind of surprised me, Dan. We're going to miss you. I knew when I met these three that this could just get it done. I was in that conference room and I just said, okay. Building this building is going to be plan A, okay? This is going to be plan A. And I know smart people. Uh, I try to surround myself with some, but I was never that smart. I spent my elementary school standing out in the hallway. Guidance counselor told me I was in the half of the class that made the top half possible one day. <laughs> I know smart people have a plan B. I made this plan A and didn't have a plan B. I said, we're going to make this thing work. I didn't have a plan B or a plan C. I believe if you truly want to make something work, have a plan A and stick with that. My wife and I have been married 30 years. You think she had a plan B? Whew. No, thank goodness. Thank goodness, no. I don't have a plan B. I don't like to focus on a plan B. I feel like Bruce, if plan B were any good, it'd be plan A anyway, right? So. Get a plan A, stick with it, and let's make it happen. Uh, Catawba County, City of Conover, thank you for letting me be part of your plan A. Uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council, uh, Jim, uh, Jay Adams, I appreciate you, Dan and Tony, above all you, Bruce, everybody on the town council, thank you for letting me be a part of what I call plan A, I guess now, whisk broom plan A. Thank you to the North Carolina General Assembly, Speaker Moore, Jay Adams, thanks to my team, John Ross and Van Southard and, and Dave Sarek and Mandy, thank you. Uh, but above all else, thank you Donald, Dan and Tony because without you, without your passion, without your spirit, I mean it was enough spirit to fill the Grand Canyon. It was just, I can feel it. I, I don't have a lot of talent, but I can recognize talent and I can recognize passion and you guys sure have it. Thank you. It's great to see everybody here today, it really is. I do, I'm going to reminisce for a moment. I, I work with, without a net and I speak without notes, so uh, worries my wife. I want you to know, I want to think about this just for a moment. I grew up in Concord, so I know where Monroe is. It's on the way to the beach. <laughs> and there, <laughs> But the, my father invited me to come to the furniture mart. Uh, in 1968, I was a senior in high school. And my first recollection of coming into Catawba County is that intersection right out there. It's the same as it was in 1968. My father told me when I finished my education, he said, you move to the Catawba Valley. That's where the action is. He was absolutely correct. And I came here in 1975 and I'll tell you something, this place, this county, these cities are so unique and we are all so blessed to be here. Now a little bit about this project. I got a call from a friend in the furniture industry and he said, you know, we have ma massive cut and sew capabilities in our area and we can use that to make PPP PPPE. And he was basically referring to mask. My second phone call was to Dan St. Louis. And Dan, in an instant, enumerated all of the things that we would need to do and have and create to, to accomplish what we were talking about, to genuinely make PPE in the United States again. 
I think my third, third phone call or, was with Donald Duncan, and that's what set things into motion. And the thing I want you to know is how many people were involved in making this happen. The first meeting with the Speaker of the House where he said, I think you got a good idea. Along the way, the gate opened and closed so many times, I can't count them. The PPE money that was used for this project was not intended for this type of thing. It was to purchase product. It was not to create a new manufacturing cluster. And we had to change a lot of things and we had to overcome a lot of objections. And I've got to thank Jason Sane, representative from Lincoln County, Senator Dean Proctor, who sat with me in a meeting where the number had gone from 3.2 million to 8.2 million to 17.3 million, and we said, if we can justify it, let's go for it. We got 14.3 million, a portion goes to Gaston, a portion comes here, and we may be setting into motion a manufacturing cluster that simply doesn't exist right now. That means jobs, not just for us, not just in Conover and Catawba County, it means in North Carolina. And it gives us that strategic advantage, that, that, that important capability, if we ever have another pandemic, to deal with PPE, because China was holding back on us. And we had no cards to play in that negotiation. We're going to end that. That goes away. But moreover, I'm just going to say this. I believe that what this future facility will do is it'll create PPE that we don't even imagine right now. I'm going to, I'm going to donate something that's going to be kind of a token of my father. My father came here in the fabric industry and uh, he loved fabric. We were in the furniture fabric business and I never understood, never appreciated his, <laughs> his fascination with fabrics. And what I have here in my hand is a little loop that he used over 50 years ago to study fabrics. And he would scrutinize them with this great intensity that completely escaped me. But my family won't know what to do with it. So I'm going to leave it here for the Manufacturing Solution Center and whatever evolves from this. But I want to reiterate this. We're all blessed to be here. This is a very, very unique part of this country and this state. I don't think it would have happened anywhere else like it's happened here. And I want to thank you all for being here. And of course, I want to thank you for allowing me to represent you. Thank you very much. Y'all, I'm so embarrassed I jumped right in front of you, Jay. I uh, told y'all I was nervous, so uh, I'm sorry about that. I really am. No but, problem. God, I, Lee, if we have a ribbon cutting over here one day, you, I, I, you don't need to put me on the agenda, Tony. I'll just jump up and speak whenever I want to. So <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry about that, Representative. I'm sorry, Mayor. Thank you all. It's very special. We're humbled that you're all here. We have refreshments across the street. And uh, Dan and his family will be over there to, uh, to want to say hello to everyone. Also, if uh, you're involved in the photo, we'll be meeting over uh, to, uh, to my right, your left, over near the, uh, where the dirt's turned uh, to get some photos. So thank you all for being here. I could at least listen to what you said. Hell, I don't care what anybody says. I think that's what I